with Chris Jericho confirming Cody Rhodes' move to WWE and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report for March 24th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official, and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. With them reunited in AEW, the Hardy Boys are on a mission to become tag team champions in the company. On Under the Ring, Matt Hardy mentioned the creative freedom they have, saying he had to tell his brother Jeff that there are no writers in AEW. AEW is on a higher platform than a Ring of Honor or TNA, especially with their television deal, which is lovely and is fantastic to have in here. Just being able to have input and help control your own destiny, it's just an amazing feeling. Like my brother when he came in yesterday, or last week, and we were talking about the second segment I was doing with Andrade. He was like, oh, you know, do the writers have it? How they want this to go? Dude, there's no writers here. They don't have writers in AEW. That doesn't happen. Literally, there's a segment, and this is kind of outline of what they're thinking. Then you put the meat on the bone, you and your crew, and that's what we did. The little segment that myself and Andrade with Private Party, I was really happy with that. Especially when Private Party did the whole thumbs deal and they went down. Just the fact that people were interested in the relationship of Matt Hardy and Private Party, which are two guys that I genuinely do love and really do like a whole lot. The fact that they reacted so strongly to that was very rewarding to me. It was the ultimate compliment. And then Jeff just showing up and taking back off and the Hardy Boys and the emotion that we had and the genuine hug, there was so much reality in that as well. And I think this is very telling at this point in our career. How much we really do appreciate having one another and how much we help one another. And I'm really excited about what is coming up and going forward. And AEW is just a place where you really do get a pretty open canvas and you get a fair opportunity to paint your own picture or play your own music, and that is one of the most amazing things about it. Following the day one pay-per-view, Drew McIntyre would be out of action with a neck injury, which he was able to return from at the Royal Rumble. Before he was done rehabbing, McIntyre revealed on WWE's The Bump that he was told he may miss WrestleMania. I feel great that I was able to come back so quickly. Initially, it was a little bit scary. Everyone saw what Happy and Madcap did to me. But speaking of the doctor, doing some tests afterward, there were some lingering issues going on and I was informed, hey, never mind making the Rumble. You may not be making Mania the way you're looking right now. It took a couple of weeks, a couple of doctors, some serious rehab, and some serious determination. Thankfully, I was cleared and was able to come back at the Rumble. I've been at 100% ever since on TV, live events. Absolutely nothing is ever going to stop me. There's a very good reason why I am called the Terminator. McIntyre would also have this to say about his upcoming match against Happy Corbin. I guess if you look at my WrestleMania matches since I returned to WWE, it began with a big match with Roman, and then I defeated Brock for the WWE Championship the following and fought for the WWE Championship against Lashley last year. Then this year it is Corbin. A lot of people might think one of these are not like the other, but at the same time, this one is as big as the others. Against Roman, it was for the championship. It was for the authority, but this is very much personal. I was gifted the match about three weeks ago. I thought I have to go fight for the match against Corbin. It was given to me, and I do not want to take him out. I could have taken him out any time over the past few weeks, but I want to wait for WrestleMania 38, the biggest stage of them all, and then embarrass Corbin. After leaving AEW with his wife Brandy last month, Cody Rhodes has reportedly signed a deal with WWE and should be returning during WrestleMania weekend. On his podcast, AEW star Chris Jericho seemingly confirmed this news, saying, I'm pulling back the curtain a little bit on the wrestling business. You're going to discover how I've been able to be Chris Jericho no matter what company I work for or where I wrestle. You'll hear how Dan Housen gets to keep his name and gimmick from promotion to promotion, how Cody got to reclaim Rhodes from WWE even though he's back in WWE.
Following a neck injury during a house show in 2017, Paige would retire from in-ring competition. While she has spoken about wanting to make a comeback, apparently fans have been calling the star out for being lazy, as Paige recently took to Twitter to respond to these claims. It's wild that some people are like, well, Edge and Brian came back, you were just lazy. I'm inspired by them. I'm not lazy. My neck needs to recover. We were all built different. Sorry. Paige revealed on Twitch that her WWE contract is set to expire in June, so it'll be interesting to see if she can get medically cleared for a future match. One of AEW's fast rising stars, MJF, has noted before that he would be willing to work for WWE when his contract expires in 2024. With that in mind, he spoke to Ariel Hawani recently, revealing he loves the shows WWE is putting out. See, I think WWE is doing great. I love everything WWE is doing. I just think we are fresh, and we have fresh faces that people haven't seen before. I think right now everything that Vince McMahon and Bruce Prichard are putting out there is absolutely incredible. I love it. I love NXT 2.0. I love Raw, I love SmackDown, I love what Roman's doing. I think Roman's putting out some great work. Paul Heyman, fellow member of the tribe, absolutely killing it. Sorry about what's going on with Brock Lesnar. You deserve better than that. I think they're putting out a great product. I think the big difference, quite frankly, is that AEW has MJF. That's the biggest difference maker you could possibly have. I genuinely love WWE programming. It's great. There are so many charisma machines on that program. I think it's a great show. They had a makeout competition this past Tuesday, gripping television. How could you not? Not like a makeout competition. I practically had a makeout competition with that hot red at a couple weeks ago. Who doesn't like a good makeout sesh? So I'm enjoying it. I think Bruce is doing a hell of a job, and at the end of the day, quite frankly, there's a lot of guys there that are developing and trying to figure out who they are as human beings. Not who they are as acts, but who they are as human beings. And it's fun to watch these guys develop and figure it out. As WWE managed to sign Olympic gold medalist Gable Stevenson last year, he recently competed in his final amateur wrestling bout, winning his second NCAA title. Speaking about him on his podcast, Ric Flair said Stevenson should focus on training for his first year in WWE. I do not believe Gable Stevenson has had much opportunity to. I know he's been at the Performance Center, but I wouldn't think that with the way he's had to condition and prepare for not only the Olympics, but the NCAA plus another year of collegiate wrestling, I would not necessarily let him do anything until he's really good. I myself have if I was in charge, I would spend a year building him because you can't learn overnight. The only guy I've seen, we talk about him all the time, who learned overnight is Kurt Angle. But I'm not saying Gable can't and he doesn't have the ability. I don't know. Gable would also note on the MMA Hour how he wants to be portrayed character-wise in WWE. Good guy that goes bad. Start off good, make the fans love you, then turn into a bad guy. Kind of like Roman Reigns did. During his short time with AEW, Dan Housen has become a fan favorite for his unique persona. While on the AEW Unrestricted podcast, he touched on breaking his leg during a match on Halloween and talked about making a comeback. Recovery is going good. We have wonderful doctors at AEW to help Dan Housen every single week. He's great. His name is Josh. He's got a mustache. Hopefully one day when Dan Housen recovers, he can have a mustache of his own. Yes, so Dan Housen has a metal rod in his leg. He had broken his tibia and fibula. This fellow had crashed down upon Dan Housen's leg and it snapped it in two. Here to pop pop and said oh good this is wonderful and he rolled to the side of the ring i believe this is the only time that dan house has sworn publicly and then what happened he went to the hospital that was nice now we had surgery a week later i believe now every single week we're trying to recover it and i think we're getting pretty close fingers crossed who knows should we surprise people here's the thing people tweet at dan house and they go when are you wrestling as though i'm going to spoil it so i don't know maybe soon hopefully soon we shall wait until mustache josh says so soon though sooner than later With AEW President Tony Khan purchasing ROH and booking the Super Card of Honor event for April 1st, he noted on Busted Open Radio that nobody does pay-per-views better than him. And we know one way to do pay-per-view. It's going 100% and doing the very best you can. So, I can promise to make that pay-per-view great. I know that there are a lot of people that are going to be around the Dallas Metroplex area at that time. And, I'll be honest, this is my first time going out there for that particular event weekend. It's not normally something I would do. It's 
it's not normally something AEW would do. And in fact, it's not something AEW would ever do and we're not doing it because the event had been scheduled in advance by Ring of Honor and the tickets had been sold. I really felt like the right thing to do, do right by the fans here, was to have the show and make it the best show I possibly could. Even though it's unusual for us to go frankly into enemy territory and run a show that weekend, it's normally something associated with smaller wrestling companies and something I didn't want to do. And that being said, since it was booked and the fans were committed to it, I'm going to go in 100% and make it the best possible thing I can. So I never expected to be talking about WrestleMania weekend and the logistics of the shows there. I have been told that they booked this show a little bit out there for what's going on and maybe a little bit off the beaten path, but I'm just going to tell everyone right now, it's going to be worth it to come to the show. It's going to be worth it to stay. I know that there are other people doing shows on Friday, April 1st, but this is going to be the best one and I'm going to make sure that it is. People control and can say what they want, but the people that have actually ordered the pay-per-views know nobody does pay-per-view better at this point. And that's not an opinion, that's a fact. And so I will promise to deliver an awesome pay-per-view here. The best Ring of Honor pay-per-view I can possibly do. Going back to his interview with Ariel Hawani, MJF would also note that he is planning on letting his AEW contract expire. When you're as talented and as over and as much of a draw as me, if I want to, I could bite all of Tony Khan's fingers. He knows where his bread is buttered. If that offended somebody in the locker room, and I know it does, oh well, cry about it. Get more over than me. Oh wait, that's right, you can't. I'm literally the best talker in the history of the business. I'm one of the best wrestlers in the history of the business. Bell to bell, because I don't just spam moves like I'm in a video game. No, I make people feel something because I'm going out there to win. I'm not going out there to show off. I'm not going out there to try and make sure I get all these people talking about my star ratings. If that happens and it's a byproduct of what I do, fantastic. I didn't get into this business to hit moves. I got into this business to make money. That's why I'm not afraid to talk about when my contract is up, January 1st, 2024, and I'm not afraid to stir that pot. It's a constant reminder to Tony Khan. I need to step my game up, and it's a constant reminder to WWE, who has extreme interest in me are going to need to make him a serious offer that he can't refuse. I'm not signing shit. No shot. It's not a test if you know you're going to win. I got the cheat code. I got the answers on a piece of paper. No, that's not something I consider unless the number was absolutely astronomical, but even then, I'm not sure I consider it. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.